my pleasure to be here. Everyone can hear me? Good. This is my talk, why one plus one does not equal to two is important. When we were little, the first thing we learned is one plus one equals two. It was not because it makes perfect logic sense for four or five years old. It's simply if we tell our parents or teacher it's something else, they would tell us, well, that's wrong. So today I'm here as a biologist, as, as a computer science, and a, as a Chinese to tell you in three different ways I can prove that one plus one does not equal two and why this is important. First example. As a biologist, we know that one plus one can be greater than two. In fact, that's how we colonize the planet. As a biologist, a single-celled organism, if you give them ideal condition, they can divide indefinitely, and that's the magic of biology. In technology, regardless, a cell phone, a camera, computer, as long as they have a processor, they can only read two numbers, ones and zeros. So for them, one plus one equals zero. <laughs> and if you are being more precise, if you are a true computer engineer, you will tell me I was wrong because one plus one equals one zero. But still, it's not two. One more dramatic example here I'm showing you is back to the 1960s and 70s during Chinese Cultural Revolution. Scholars were captured, books were burned, knowledge was defined, useless. So how do we solve mathematical equations if we don't learn anything? Well, it turned out Chairman Mao is the solution to everything. Of course, he's the solution to everything. So if you don't know how to solve a mathematical equation, write down Chairman Mao, you'll get 100% on your math exams. <laughs> so the idea behind one plus one does not equal two is that one problem in different condition, or you look at in a different perspective, you can have different solutions. And let's use this idea to solve real life issues. This is called a population pyramid. What we are seeing here, well, actually is a perfect example, one plus one greater than two. During 55 years period, US population almost doubled. The baby boom in 1960s transformed in this cluster of aging population. This phenomenon of aging population is even more severe on a global scale. We are looking at here is a diagram illustrating you that within 100 years, the percentage of elderly and younger kids and newborns will switch completely. And we are right on the tipping point. Why is this important? Before I answer this question, I want to ask all of you, how many of you here are around 20 years age or younger? Well. Good news, everyone, because your body are in ideal condition fight off diseases. But as we aging, our body become more susceptible to all form of diseases. Heart attack, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer, you name it. Put into numbers, heart diseases kill one in 10 people every year. That's one in every four deaths. 14.5 million population currently has one type of cancer, and this trend is increasing. Alzheimer's won't kill you as fast as a heart attack, but 5.3 million population has this condition. Put into perspective, one in nine adults aged 65 years or older has this condition. And apparently, it's very costly. In US, 45 2% federal revenue are spent on healthcare related program and researchers. And for some reason, more people get sick, we pay money to buy medicine, it boosts up our GDP, show the rest of the world, US is a healthy country to live in. Can you believe that? So, 
Uh, we all agree that aging population is a big issue. We do. Well, I can't just walk away after telling you something everyone agrees. I would feel bad I'm stealing politician's job. <laughs> so let's use the idea of one plus one does not equal to two. Find a solution as a scientist to this big aging population issue. First of all, as we aging, as the aging population will rise the increasing needs for the healthcare professionals. In the next few decades, can we maintain the staff to the resident ratio for our healthcare professionals? Will you, college students, become a health professionals, help the world by action? If you are not interested to become a doctor, nurse, CNAs, will you find a novel approach? I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. Learn from Disney. Use your creativity and the imagination. Solve the problem in a different way. That's why we learn one plus one does not equal two. Aspect two, aging population at the point people get old and they will need disease diagnosis and treatment. Myself is a biomedical researcher. I believe that I can improve some redundant procedure we have been done in the last 40 years. So I've been working on this side project called Time Stage. It's a simple idea. It does not allow you to travel through time, but save your time. This, I, this idea prototype shows you you can sufficiently automate progress done by human hands, hence save hours of work to shorten the diagnostic time for the patient. I can do it here, so do you. Computer scientists develop a better program, improve medical devices. Engineers, well, you guys are crazy enough. I don't have to tell you more. <laughs> Biologists discover novel mechanisms so that we can use as a tool to against the devastating diseases. Business major come up with better business model, run hospital and clinic, even the entire society, so we can run more efficiently. The third perspective, we all believe that one ounce of prevention is worth than a pound of cure. Well, unless you work for a pharmaceutical company. <laughs> so keep in mind we are dealing with two age population, our grandparents and ourselves. So why not take a few moments a week, meet up, meet up with them, call them, interact with them, engage some intellectual conversations or activities. Any intellectual simulation will significantly reduce the chance of Alzheimer. And very good communication can prevent major depression. It's not for the benefit of your grandparents, but for yourself. At age 20 years old, you are twice much likely to suffer from major depression because the pressure put on you on your shoulder in this world. So also, as a college student, why not simply take a biology class, understand disease from a fundamental level, and promote disease prevention from the first step? So we do have solutions for disease prevention under the huge topic of aging population. What we have learned in this short talk. Overall, we tackle a big issue. We have aging population, and it will raise a lot of problems. We take it apart, put it into different conditions, look at different perspectives. We can come up with different solutions, just like we did when we look at one plus one. And that is why we have to realize that one plus one does not equal two is important. And that's why we are here. Thank you very much.